energy in towards the conference room and beyond out in perhaps where the business areas are. So conference rooms are actually quite good settings to think about using a patch or panel antenna. And here's that example what I talked about earlier where you might want to use a Yagi antenna. So see where those boxes are? Well, I don't really need coverage where the boxes are. Where I need coverage is in those aisleways where I might need to capture information about packages that are being taken off the shelves and or be packages being put on the shelf. And so using a Yagi antenna that's focusing the beam all the way down these long narrow aisles can give me really much better coverage than I could if I put an omni antenna in this situation. A few years ago I did a deployment down the, the channel tunnel which joins England and France. Narrow tunnels like that. Again, Yagi antennas are great. Get goodly good coverage all the way down the tunnel. So let's now talk about MIMO, multiple input, multiple output antennas. Now there's actually two different capabilities when we think about MIMO that can exist on your access points. One of them is called beamforming and beamforming is normally on your more higher end access points because it's a little expensive and Really what it does is it's really able to focus that energy into a beam pattern. And so it gives you that increased distance, that increased range that you're able to get coverage at. Spatial multiplexing is the technique in 802.11n that gets you up to the really, really high data rates. And so that's a very important one to understand. Now the way these antennas work is they transmit in the same frequency at the same time on multiple antennas and they receive that energy on multiple antennas. Now when you transmit in the same frequency at the same time on different antennas those signals will combine over the air and arrive together at the receiving antennas and you'll say well don't they interfere with each other and yes they do but I'm able to unscramble the received signal and be able to get back to what the signal was on those different antennas. And the reason I can do that is that when your signals leave your different antennas, those signals will follow very different paths. And this is what we refer to as multipath. And MIMO works best when you have a lot of multipath. A multipath is formed where my signals are leaving one antenna and bouncing off obstacles such as the walls, such as filing cabinets, even your body. And so these signals from different antennas are following very different paths by the time then they arrive at your receiver. So here I'm looking at going from the access point to the client, but again the client can often have multiple antennas, so it could equally be transmitting from the client and then arriving at the access point. So here's an explanation of how spatial multiplexing works. You can see here in this illustration that I'm taking your bit stream, your ones and zeros, and I'm splitting that data stream onto two antennas. And so I'm forming two spatial streams. Both those antennas then transmit in the same frequency. And you can see here that antenna one is transmitting my modulation symbol one and antenna two is transmitting my modulation symbol two. So you can consider this for simplicity. So antenna one is sending bit one and antenna two is sending bit two. And then what arrives on the receiving side at this antenna is a combination of bit one and bit two and what's arriving on this second antenna is the combination of bit one and bit two. But because they followed very different spatial streams, I can use very sophisticated mathematical techniques to recover the signal and get back to your data stream. And so in this example, I doubled your data rate. I'm using two antennas, I get twice the data rate. 
Similarly, if I transmit on three antennas, which is referred to as a 3 by 3 MIMO, I can get to three times the data rate. And using the newer access points that have a 4x4 four four MIMO, then I can transmit and receive on four antennas and therefore get up to even higher data rates. So this is the concept of spatial multiplexing. I'm multiplexing your data onto multiple antennas. So now we should be able to understand the data rates a little bit better. Remember earlier on in the previous lesson, we talked about the modulation and coding scheme index. So here you can see it. This is just some of the data rates you can get. Now in this example, I'm looking at the top end of access points where I have four spatial streams. And so remember before, we talked about the modulation and coding scheme index. And now you can see when I'm using four spatial streams, those indexes are going all the way up to 31. Here now you can see the 20 megahertz band. And if I go to a 40 megahertz band with four spatial streams and 64 QAM and a 5.6 coder, then I can get all the way up to 600 megabits per second. So that's my theoretical maximum that I can achieve with the 802.11n standards. But bear in mind, most of the Cisco access points that are out there are a 3x3 three three MIMO. So they get up to 450 megabits per second, but not all the way up to 600 megabits per second. So now I want to talk about beam forming. So we talked about spatial multiplexing and I showed you how I get up to higher data rates by transmitting on multiple antennas. Now I want to show you beam forming. And beam forming I also transmit on multiple antennas. And the way I always like to explain this is imagine if you were looking at a lake or a pond and you threw two stones, and those stones simultaneously hit the pond at the same time. And what would happen from those stones is waves would ripple out. And where those waves meet each other, they would form a crest where they may enforce each other, or they may form a null where they flatten the signal out. And so these two waveforms from these two pebbles radiate out and form these patterns where those waveforms combine. And that is how beam forming works, by very carefully selecting the gain and the phase for the transmitted signal on each of these antenna elements, I can form beams. And not only can I form beams, but I can move the direction of those beams and the size of those beams by changing the gain and the phase on the individual antenna elements. So I'm basically, just like with the pebbles in the lake, reinforcing the signal in some areas and cancelling it other areas to form these very unique patterns over the air. Now, here's a Cisco example of their 3600 series access point, and they call it a 4x4 four four MIMO. But if you actually look at it, and this is why I wanted to show you that chart earlier on, when you go in and configure it, it goes up to a modulation coding scheme index up to 23, not up to 31. And so the maximum data rates you can achieve on this antenna is 450. What that means is that it's not transmitting on four antennas, it's receiving on four antennas. So it is 4x4 four four MIMO in the sense that I have four antennas and I'm using those four antennas for receiving and then I'm probably transmitting on three but it's a 4x4 four four MIMO. This also, this access point, not only supports spatial multiplexing to get me up to the higher data rates, it also supports beam forming. And without looking at the design, I cannot tell you if a beam forming is transmitting on all four antennas, but I suspect that it is. And beam forming, again, allows me to form narrow beams not so good in an office environment if I want to radiate all the way around the access point, 
let's say for instance I'm in an office environment and I've got a stairwell and I don't want to deploy an access point out there because you know I don't really have many people out in the stairwell well maybe I can form a beam in that direction and just get coverage in the stairwell without needing to deploy an extra access point. Well, before I finish up on this section, I wanted to talk a little bit about some best practices for when you're doing your site survey when it comes to antennas. So when you do your site survey, you always want to do your site survey with the access point that you plan to deploy because different access points will have different coverage. The data rate and the capacity, therefore, will be different in different areas because your coverage is different. The range obviously is different because the coverage is different. So, you know, you may have greater range or less range. Your receiver sensitivity of the access point could be different as well. And where that would make a difference is when your clients are trying to connect to the access point. So I always recommend that you take an access point with you that you can use external antennas, that you take a range of different antennas with you, and so if you find some areas like the conference room, like a warehouse or an area where you just have interference or a particular problem, antennas can actually help you resolve that problem. So take a range of antennas with you, you know, a couple of Yagi antennas, a couple of patch antennas, and just try them out and see if they help you resolve certain problems when you're doing your site survey. And of course, the other thing is, take some cable with you because you know you might want to just put up your antenna on the ceiling and look at the coverage and have your access point down on the ground now you may not deploy it like that but from an ease of doing the site survey having some extra cable runs can actually be very advantageous for trying to find out the information you need which is what your coverage looks like so one of the hardest things to understand about antennas is that radiation pattern. So in this illustration, I just want to show you how changing the antenna can change your 